Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Lee Komeda, and I'm on the global business marketing team at Facebook. As our Valley partners, we are excited to talk to you today about creative tips for the carousel format. In this webinar, Lewis Tussle from the Facebook Creative Shop team will talk through seven tips for designing engaging creative for the carousel format across Facebook, Instagram, and the audience network. We will close the webinar with a live Q&A. A few housekeeping items before we get started. A recording of this webinar will be linked in the follow-up email that we'll send later on this week. If you have any questions during the webinar, please enter your question in the questions window of the GoToWebinar control panel on your screen. We'll try to get to as many questions as we can at the end of this webinar. And with that, I'll hand it over to Lewis. Firstly, good morning, everyone. My name is Lewis, and I work as a creative strategist on our creative shop team here at Facebook. For those of you who are familiar with our team, fantastic. And for those of you who are not, let me just add a little bit more color. So we're a relatively small team inside Facebook who work to ensure that our clients are creating the best possible creative work for the Facebook and Instagram platforms. We have a huge wealth of different backgrounds on the team that allow us to do this, ranging from ex-film directors, illustrators, marketing consultants, planners, creative directors, producers, etc. Our primary focus is that we enable our clients to scale to create ads that maximize the money they spend on the Facebook and Instagram platforms. We do this through both bespoke one-to-one -one lighthouse campaigns that we develop with our clients and also through creative best practices that scale, which funnily enough brings me on to today. So I'm going to talk to you about the carousel ad format and share some tips I have on creating beautiful and engaging creative for it. The tips are both a combination of trends that we have seen from numerous successful campaigns on the platform and some other thought starters that myself and the team have put together. So before we jump into the tips, I want to share a little bit on why this unit is so powerful. In recent years, we are seeing more and more that people are spending the majority of their time on mobile. This shift has been pretty prominent in recent years, seeing us move from radio to TV, TV to digital, and finally from digital to mobile. We now spend roughly three hours a day on mobile. And on this chart, you can see in comparison to television and print, the difference is quite stark. When we dig a little further into the time spent on mobile, we see that the majority of this time is spent in apps. What is interesting about apps is how they have altered how we consume content. For instance, if you look across many of the top apps out there, be it Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube, we see many of them utilizing a feed mechanism i.e. where you scroll through the content from top to bottom. This is interesting as it is a new manner in which we are consuming content and one in which there is much space for learning about what creative will resonate most in this environment. Furthermore, when you look at the Facebook family of apps, which includes Facebook, Instagram, and apps in the audience network, we see that the possibility to connect with people within these apps is greater than ever seeing a combined total of 1.59 billion people who visit the apps each month. And that number is still growing. This means that it is easier than ever to reach the people who matter to your business. However, even though it has become easier, we have seen that the creative bar for content has been raised. This is because many feed environments have started to deliver content that is deemed to be the most relevant to that person, i leveraging things such as algorithms. The onus on us, therefore, to deliver content that is relevant to our audience and delights people in their feed is more forefront than ever. This comes through both the targeting options that we use, but also in the visual content and concepts we develop. This is, again, very important for mobile, as we have seen it become increasingly visual and is a major factor as to why formats such as video, carousel and video carousel have been developed. OK. So we're going to kick off by talking a bit about the carousel format and give a quick overview of its features. We will then dive straight into the tips. As we go through all of this, if you have any questions you think of, feel free to submit them in the window for myself to answer at the end. So the unit. The unit is available across Facebook, Instagram, and the audience network. And it's pretty exciting for us and our partners as it provides you with more creative real estate in Newsfeed to tell your story and showcase your products. This is something that we haven't always had. When you think about the history of Facebook advertising, 
we started off with pretty text heavy right hand side desktop banners. We now have formats that are in stream, native, and can be optimized for any objective across all of our platforms. Overall, the carousel is pretty immersive and allows us to play more creatively on the platform. It gives us a larger canvas. This creativity enabled by the carousel is a key driver in ensuring campaign performance for it will drive relevance with our audience and receive improved delivery in the Facebook auction. So here's how it works. Across Facebook, Instagram, and the audience network, you can showcase up to five clickable images within a single ad unit. You don't have to include five, and we have actually seen people playing with this. As with any piece of creative, you should include as many components as necessary to deliver the most impactful message. For instance, I would rather develop a carousel of three than five if it was going to make my message more concise and visually engaging. So it's really up to you how you to choose to play with this. From the carousel format, you can direct people to any destination, whether that is a website, a mobile app, or a lead form. It is therefore pretty relevant no matter what line of business you are in as an advertiser. On Facebook, you now also have the option to add video to the carousel. This is newer, and it must be said that the tips in this webinar were developed for static imagery. However, you may find that some of the tips logically extend to video carousels too. And video is really exciting for us also. We've seen people combining video and static together, sometimes running all video carousels. So the tools that you have to play with here are now wider than ever, and your creative canvas is bigger to reach the people that matter to you in a meaningful way. Right, so that's the more practical bits out of the way. And there is much more information on the Facebook for Business website in terms of the specs around the format. But now I'm going to dive into the seven creative tips. Cool. So the first tip is to use the carousel format to tell a story. Storytelling is fundamental to success on the Facebook and Instagram platforms. Your feeds are full of personal stories, be it your friends post about a recent vacation they've been on, or a family member's video of their new child. It is thus important that we are aware of this context that our content is fitting into and develop ads that, as I said, fit into it. If we are aggressively direct in our communications, we may stick out in the wrong way, but also if we don't differentiate ourselves, we will be scrolled past. We thus need to strike the right balance in our stories communication. The core objective of an advertiser in a feed environment is to grab the user's attention and get them to stop scrolling. Engaging creative is the number one way to do this, which is great for the carousel format as we believe it allows you to create deeper emotive bonds with your target audience. So one of the ways we've been seeing the unit be used is to showcase a variety of products. And this is fantastic and a great way of leveraging the carousel format, but the possibilities are much greater in terms of the stories we can tell. So I just wanted to run through a few examples with you here. This is an example from Mercedes-Benz Canada. And if you read the copy, it says, no challenge is too monumental for Explorer Mike Horn and the Mercedes-Benz G-Class. The first image shows him rock climbing, and it says, watch him make the best of his ground. The next is him with his backpack on exploring, planned to the finest detail. Thirdly, it's a picture of the car itself, driven by confidence. Next, it's him camping out in a sort of panoramic shot next to the car what exploration is all about, and lastly, the car and him. Make the best of every ground. And what's really interesting about this piece of creative is that it sequentially tells a story throughout the different images of the unit. Again, in the third and fourth components of the creative, they've actually included a panoramic view. So they're really playing with the format. They're not just using the five pieces to put one image in. They are utilizing the creative space in, in an engaging way. Again, the imagery in this is consistent and it's something we'll get onto in a minute. So that's one idea. What if we told sequential stories through the unit? Next, what if we linked these images together into one larger panorama that gave a view into a wider story? So we see here in three and four, as I said, that they have started to do that. When I'm referring to a panorama, I'm referring to the fact that you would have one image across the entire unit. So it's cut up into five sections. Um, this is one execution. Again, they've only chose to do it in two here. It's important to realize that when you're doing a panorama, 
every single image needs to exist as its own piece of creative. For instance, if I had a plane in the sky, which you'll see in the next example, if the first image was just blue sky, that's not very engaging for me. And I'm probably going to scroll straight past it when I see it in my newsfeed. So every image needs to be additive or have an element in it that is engaging so that I will scroll all the way to the end and see your full communication. Another example here is that you may want to zoom into specific product features from the first image to the last. For instance, if you're a sun care brand, you could zoom in from the sun to the earth, to the holiday location, to the, to the man or woman lying on the beach, to their skin, all the way down to the cells that the sun cream affects. Again, all we're doing is taking the carousel format and leveraging it to tell a different type of story with the more creative real estate that we now have at our fingertips. The last example here is rotate views of a product across the carousel format. So if you are an e-commerce client and you want to showcase your new product, the most obvious thing you would do is put a picture of the product on a quite a simple background. But if your product had some great details that you wanted to show or you wanted to show it in a more engaging manner, you may be then able to rotate it across the carousel format, bringing it a full 360 degrees back to the start. Again, you could play with video here and put that in. Perhaps you have someone walking down the catwalk in the full outfit, and then you rotate some of the products or you rotate them around the catwalk across the carousel. So these four tips are just the tip of the iceberg, really, and we want you to play with it more in terms of the stories you can tell. For instance, again, you know, what if the first image hid something whilst the next revealed it? What if the emotions conveyed by the imagery change from happy to sad across the unit? or from sad to happy, or any emotion that you can imagine? What if every single new piece of creative built on the last? For instance, if you had a product, product catalog, you could show one product in the first, add another one in the second, add another in the third, et cetera, all the way along. So there's many dimensions to the unit that we have, and they're yet to be explored. So we really, really want you to play with them and make the best possible creative work on the platform. The next tip is to use thumb stopping creative. So when people are scrolling through your feed, they engage with creative in quite a calculated manner. First, they engage with the image. Then they look at the copy, i.e. the text portion of your post, what you have to say. Next, they look at your logo, i.e. who is saying it. And lastly, they choose whether or not they wish to engage and leave a like, comment, or even share. To ensure your ad captures attention in newsfeed, make sure your creative has a strong focal point, is well art directed, leverages depth of space, and is thoughtfully composed. Now those tips aren't set in stone, but they're just general guidance in terms of how we would look to make engaging imagery. What these points do is provide the viewer with a clear place to look and engage with the piece. If our images are very cluttered, they create a sensory overload and are harder, harder to immediately engage with. The second part to this is that we want to evoke an emotive response from our audience that gets them to remember you and act. This is true of any advert and is driven by impactful and thoughtful creative. By creating an emotive bond through your imagery, this will increase engagement with your brand and product over time. So if you look at this example here from KLM, we see the very first image, you would only see half of the plane there is a clear focal point in the top right here that draws you in. Equally, it's leveraging depth of space with something in the foreground, and the color contrasts here are quite visual. So this feels like something I would want to engage with. Again, as the plane is half off the screen, this is probably going to encourage you to swipe to see what's next. And again, there's still a clear focal point on that image. It exists as its own image. Lastly, you finish with the traveler looking at the plane, thinking about their next trip. So every single image, as I said before, exists as its own piece of creative. We also then end on the KLM logo. The next tip is to imply continuation. So the biggest challenge of the carousel unit is the first swipe. Once someone takes the first swipe, they tend to go all the way to the end. You can compel your audiences to swipe by creating a need to complete approach in your creative. For example, your first piece of creative can tease your second, or your first piece of creative can imply that the rest of the creative will continue the story. Interlinking imagery amongst the carousel can help to get people to swipe. 
i.e. with objects or elements of the image leading off the screen and into the next unit. For instance, in our example with Geo here, you are advertising the Geo Nebula shoe, you can see how we only see half a shoe. This feels slightly unnatural and will prompt the viewer to find out why. Moreover, you can play with this more. For instance, if you were using people, they could be holding hands into the next part of the creative or be looking off the side to suggest there is something more there. We don't have to have elements linking off into the next piece. Although it does help, we can be quite smart with the visual cues that we give our viewers to be able to lead them onto the next piece. The possibilities are endless in terms of the execution of this. What I like about this Geo Nebula piece is again, it's for e-commerce. They are showcasing a catalog of shoes in a very simplistic and visual way. Again, at the end, what they've done is they've showcased the shoes in this sort of spiral, which looks like a loading symbol to an extent, but that's a very visually engaging way to showcase your products rather than just putting it on a plain white background. Again, they're playing with the carousel and we think that's fantastic. The tip number four is to develop creative consistency. It is important to ensure that all of your creative within the carousel format has a similar visual style across lighting, colors, composition, and in its communication of your brand. A visual thread is key for this, as if the creative feels disjointed, it detracts from the story you want to tell. We have an example from Verizon here that does that quite well. So the copy on it reads, one plan, four sizes, so simple, even these guys get it. And if you look at the individual copy on the post, so the first post is a small dog on quite a simple background with small, medium, large, and extra large in the top left, which referring to the plans. So the small plan fits in your pocketbook. The next, the medium plan, go browse off the leash. Third, the large plan, watch all the cat videos. The last, the extra large plan feeds big appetites. So I'm assuming that this feeds into a larger campaign that Verizon are running. Um, but what's really nice about it is there's this consistent feel across. The viewer knows what to expect when they start to scroll and it makes it easier for them to digest. As we said, lighting, color, composition are some of the ways to do this, but there are many, many more. Tip five, and one of the most important ones, which actually goes back to the creative consistency tip we just spoke about, is to demonstrate your brand identity. To be remembered, we know that it is important to incorporate your brand. For more established brands, this can come across subtly in the visual execution of the ad. But for those who need to be more front and center, you may want to be more explicit. The final frame is often the destination of choice to showcase your brand or its logo, but it doesn't necessarily have to be the last thing people see. In this example from Simple, you see that they're not actually using it in the last one at all. It's native to the product. So we have in this example, um, and it's all about your skin standing out. The lady in the image is wearing the same top as the background, which is highlighting that her skin stands out, and it creates a focal point on her skin. We see that the brand feel comes out in each of the images. Moreover, as I said, they haven't just finished with the logo, but on the product itself. They still communicate the brand, yet not as directly as simply placing a logo on all of the images, which is interesting as it feels more native. We can experiment with having the branding more upfront or also natively in the products that are displayed. For instance, there's nothing to say that your brand can't be incorporated in the middle of a carousel or in the start of it. And again, this is going to depend on the objectives you're trying to drive. If I'm trying to drive app installs or commerce, maybe it's less important for me to showcase my brand logo up front, and I might want to leave that towards the end to let people see all the amazing products that I have. If I was driving brand awareness, perhaps I would want to consider incorporating this earlier or doing it natively within all of my products. Again, we need to remember that there is a logo on every single post when people are swiping through the carousel. At the top left, it says simple skincare, and then you have the copy simple skincare for sensitive skin. So people are likely to see what brand this is from, and we really should probably just be focusing on the imagery itself to get people engaged and get them to stop in their feed. As we said earlier, to get someone to stop scrolling is a hard task, especially when they're scrolling through at the speed of knots. At Facebook, we call it the thumb stopping creative power, i.e. how powerful is your creative 
in getting someone's thumb to stop on your ads and engage with it. We encourage you to play with your identity in the carousel format to get the best results. Tip number six, don't forget the copy. Whilst the image portion of the creative is usually what captures your audience's attention and is extremely important, it can be very easy to forget the copy. It is important to remember that the copy is just as much a part of the creative as the image or video and can be additive to the stories you're trying to tell. For instance, it can be seen sort of a, as a supporting actor. A great example of this is traditional print advertising. Whilst we have seen copy decrease in print ads since the 1950s, we often still see short taglines that frame the wider story and message. This is similar to the copy or text portion of a Facebook or Instagram ad. In the carousel ad format, copy can be used to imply continuation that gets people to click on the ad or swipe to the final creative unit. We can do this through the language we use, leaving cliffhangers in our sentences at the end of each of the units or in the way that our sentences are composed. For instance, decomposing them into small chunks across the unit. We have also seen people leaving dots, suggesting that it leads on for more information. So if we look at this example here from Lexus for their car, the NX300H, if you look at just the images, it shows a car, it shows the side of a car, a wheel, a car, and the Lexus logo. Again, the images look fantastic. They are consistent with each other. They're following a lot of the rules that we think are fundamental for success on the carousel units. But when we read the copy, it really brings out the life of the creative and adds a lot more color to it. So on the first one, you see a picture of the car, yet it reads innovative hybrid drive. The next, you see the side of a car, but it reads captivating exterior. Thirdly, you have the wheel, luxurious details. Again, it's a close up shot there. Lastly, the picture of the car again, where would you go? A call to action. And so what that copy has done is really bring out the story of Lexus and what they're trying to communicate to their audience. They've done this in a consistent way and it's led people to the end of the carousel. So again, we really don't want to forget about the copy. Whilst most of the value is driven by the image, it's important to not forget it because it's just going to make your ad work that little bit harder and cut through the competitiveness of the Facebook newsfeed and or Instagram. Tip seven, get people to act. For campaigns with a direct response objective, ensure your call to action is prominent and additive to the story being told. We should look to keep our call to action short and allow it to connect with your campaign, not just the individual image or video. This is important as your carousel will often be one portion of a larger campaign. Moreover, on Facebook, you can use different captions per creative, i.e. underneath the carousel. So make it work hard. We have an example here from a game called Delicious, Emily's New Beginning. The copy on the images reads, Emily's becoming a mummy, and you see her lying in bed. The baby's name is Paige. Again, her and her husband or partner are constructing some sort of baby crib. Come say hello to Paige. The baby's been born. Everyone's very, very happy. Help Emily have it all. And so when we look at this creative, we see that they're trying to tell a story from start, expecting the baby all the way to the happiness of actually having the baby. Again, the copy they're using is additive to the imagery they're using and the stories they're trying to tell. Furthermore, it uses a call to action. Help Emily have it all. Come say hello to Paige in the last two pieces. What's interesting about this, especially for direct response objectives, is that they are framing the ask of the person who is viewing their ad in a human way and in a storytelling manner. One of the trends we have seen on Facebook in terms of direct response is that people tend to be quite direct, buy now, shop now. And this is fantastic as it, as it often works. But again, we don't want to diminish our brand equity by being too direct and not speaking in the way that we would speak across all of our other communications as well. So our advice would be, yes, you can still ask someone to shop now, but you can frame it in the story that you're telling and you can also frame it in your brand's tone of voice as well. Lastly, we have the tip here to keep it short and allow it to connect with your campaign. Now, copy is a funny one, and we referred to it earlier with the 1950s ads, which used to be very text heavy. Copy should be as long as it needs to be to tell the story that you want to tell. 
i.e. to get across the communication that you really want your viewer to see or hear. That being said, we typically see shorter copy is visually easier for people to digest in newsfeed. Moreover, if it is longer, there's going to be a button which says see more, which people have to click into to read the rest of your story. When you have this longer copy and someone has to click in to see more, you are asking the viewer to take another action, which as we know on Facebook, when there's a lot of competition and you're scrolling through very fast, those extra actions could be the drop off point in terms of people viewing your ad. So we wanna keep it visual, we wanna keep it engaging, and we wanna keep the copy short and additive to the story too. Cool, so that's the seven tips that we have for you today. As we said, these are things that we've seen being successful on the platform and also some thought starters that we've put together. We would love you to play with the format and to figure out how it works best for you and your business objectives. Just a few little tips we have here in terms of getting started. So firstly, identify an upcoming ad campaign with storytelling potential or any other campaigns that you're currently running on Facebook where you think the carousel format could give you more creative real estate to tell fantastic stories that will connect with your audience. Secondly, as the unit is five uh, or three, whatever you choose really, pieces of creative, we would suggest developing custom imagery for this to get the best results possible. That being said, it doesn't necessarily have to be the case and we can repurpose existing assets into the format. For instance, across many of your channels and touch points, you may have assets already sitting there that could help form a perfect story across the carousel. Moreover, if you had, say, a high-res image of a shoot or a catalog shot, or if you were a food brand of all of the different pieces of food on a table, and it was high-res enough, you could actually crop in to different elements of these images and create a carousel from one image. So again, look at the assets you have. If you're not trying out carousel, maybe that's the first place to start um, in terms of fitting them into it. And then once you're bought into it, develop some custom imagery to really push it to its full potential. Obviously, with video again now, it is even more uh, of an opportunity to connect with people. And now let's open it up for questions. So as a reminder, you can enter your questions in the question window of the GoToWebinar control panel on your screen. We will try to get through as many of these as we can or as many questions as there are. And we will start looking. Okay, so we have a question here from from Betty, RE Carousel Video. Okay, so video. Is there a way to autoplay a video in the carousel? Currently, the user has to select the preview image, and only then the video is played. So. Good question, Betty, thank you. Video should autoplay in Carousel now. As people scroll back and forth, the frame and view it should also play. We actually preload some of the videos ahead of time to re reduce the friction of having people to actually click into videos to get them play to play. If it is not autoplaying immediately, it may be something to do with the inter internet connection at the time or the inability to preload it via Wi-Fi. Um, but as we said, they should be also playing. Next question we have Sally. What's the difference between the carousel format across Facebook, Instagram, and the audience network? Cool. Okay, so the carousel format on Facebook has a few additional capabilities not currently available on Instagram and the audience network. For example, you can upload a video into the carousel format on Facebook. Uh, Facebook can also auto optimize the order of images within the carousel format based on performance. Each card within Facebook and the audience network can have different URLs, whereas on Instagram, all cards will link you to the same URL. Hopefully that sorts that one. Okay. We have another question here from Joan. Uh, can we mix pictures and video in the same ad unit? So you're not limited to using uh, just video or static images in a single ad unit on Facebook. You can use both in the same ad, but on Instagram and the audience network, you can currently only use images in the carousel format. 
we have another question here from Jason. What kind of successes are advertisers seeing with Carousel? Cool, so <laughs> a lot hopefully. We have one example from King, who are a mobile gaming company who make Candy Crush and uh, the other other ones as well. They use Carousel ads and saw a 32% lower cost per install on Android, um, which is huge for a client who is spending at such scale on the Facebook platform. Um, also, we have an example from MVMT, who are an e-commerce watch company. And they use Carousel ads and saw that they actually achieved a 1.8x higher click-through rate with carousel ads versus standard link ads. Moreover, they had about a 3x lower cost per acquisition compared to other advertising channels. Um, you can find some of the success stories on the Facebook for Business website too. So for the King one, it would be www.facebook.com forward slash business forward slash success forward slash King. Uh, for MVMT watches, it would be facebook.com forward slash business, forward slash success, forward slash MVMT dash watches. Are gifts supported? Um, I believe they are in the MP4 or .mov formats. So again, not in a .gif format, but in an MP4 or .mov. What is the length of videos in seconds from a halo? So the length is 45 minutes, but the shorter, the better, essentially. As we said earlier, the newsfeed is an incredibly competitive environment and people are scrolling through fast. You have a communication. Often that communication can be conveyed in a short amount of time. People will either choose to engage with it and react or carry on moving. To have someone for a really long period of time is doable, it's plausible, but your content has to be very, very engaging. So if we look at the types of video length that we see be successful on a platform, some of the most successful videos we have seen have been four to five minutes long. But again, these videos have been from the likes of Nike, Red Bull, around, or especially with Nike around the World Cup, etc. And uh, there was a video which was animated, had Neymar and Cristiano Ronaldo in, etc. And so, yes, that was a long video. We saw it be very, very successful. And we have seen long videos prove to be successful. But on the flip side, we also see on average that shorter videos are tending to perform slightly better. Now, that's not to say long uh, form video format doesn't work. But just on average, we see the shorter, the better. As we said, people are going through so fast. We want them to easily digest and consume your content. Next up, we have a question from Tessia, and she says, what is creative optimization? Cool, good question. Um, so creative optimization is an opt-in feature for carousel link ad advertisers that automatically selects and orders the images and links on a person level. Um, I think we actually have another question here from Samantha, which says, do you recommend creative optimization for the carousel format? Which that works out well, seeing as we're talking about it anyway. Um, so yes, we recommend that you use creative optimization when your cards do not have to be shown in a set order. So MVMT, the watch company, e-commerce, who we spoke about earlier, saw a 25% increase in click-through rates using carousel ad creative optimization. Creative optimization is not recommended for a panorama carousel or any carousel where your images have to be specifically shown in a certain order to get across the story that you're trying to tell. If this is not the case, then absolutely use it. And we've seen really good results with that. Okay, so we have a question from Jonathan. Um, how many cards can you have in the carousel format? So you can showcase up to five. Um, on Facebook, you can upload 10 images and allow Facebook to automatically choose which five to show based on performance. So again, this refers to the optimization piece that we spoke about earlier. Um, again, this applies to both video and static image carousels. Um, but it is worth noting, as we spoke about earlier, yes, you can showcase up to five, but that may not necessarily be the right approach every single time. If you have three amazing pieces of imagery and copy that you want to showcase and four and five aren't doing the others justice, then I would suggest telling the story with three. We don't have to have someone engage with five pieces of creative to drive the results that we're looking to deliver. 
cool. So again, another question around video and static. So can I use both video and static images in the same ad? Um, you're not limited to just using video or static images in a single ad on Facebook. You can use both in the same ad, but on Instagram and the audience network, you can currently only use the images in the carousel format. Um, can I use video carousel for mobile app install campaign? This is from Hendrik. Yes, uh, through all interfaces. That's one of the newer capabilities we've added. And actually for app installs and direct response objectives, we've seen video be a really effective solution. I think for the longest period of time, we just had static imagery and we are seeing the feed become increasingly more visual and that video content is having a very, very strong pickup. So I would look to explore any direct response objectives with it. Um, there's also many things you can do creatively to make it more interesting. So there are now things called cinemagraphs or otherwise known as moving pictures. And there's many ways to make these very easily. So you could have a pre-existing video asset and what you do is you mask some of the image to not move and then you leave a portion of the image still moving. So it looks like a moving photograph to an extent. Um, to do it is quite simple with programs such as Photoshop, but there are also apps out there now. Um, one great one that I've been using recently is Flixel or Flixel Pro. Um, you take a video uh, of something moving and then you literally swipe your finger over the parts of the image that you don't want to move and then it leaves the one part of the image moving. Um, so that's a really great way to make quick, easy video content, which is halfway between a static image and also a video. Um, a top tip with that would be to, if you are recording the video, make sure there's not too much background movement as it makes it hard to isolate it. But again, there's a huge amount of fantastic apps out there, all available for free, that can allow you to make visually engaging video content some of which are actually made by Instagram. So we now have Boomerang, which allows you to make looping GIFs. We have Hyperlapse, which creates these time-lapse-esque videos. Um, and that's also available on the iPhone itself. You can make time-lapse videos. You can make slow motion videos. Um, having a phone in your pocket now really turns you into whatever you want to be. It can turn you into director, illustrator, uh, you know, fantastic Photoshopper. So we would love for you to play with these and make video content to drive those DR objectives. Okay, we have another question here from Melanie. Would you recommend Carousel for the audience network, even if we do not know exactly how it will look? Sorry, there was a little bit of lag there. Um, yes, it would increase your reach and provide you with quality inventory. We know, as we said before, that lots of time is spent in apps. These are Facebook owned apps such as Facebook and Instagram, but also there's many other apps out there that the audience network can get your ads into. So we think it is a, a quality solution and that that increased reach will deliver you results. Uh, we have another question here from Anna. And it says, can we disable the end card? So the end card, just to clarify, is the final card in a carousel ad that highlights your company logo and website. The end card does not appear for app installs and engagement and is optional for rest. You can turn off the checkbox that says add a card at the end with your page profile picture in CreateFlow and Power Editor. So if you don't want it, you know, just, just turn it off. And again, we spoke about earlier, having that end card is, is great for showcasing your brand, but we saw with the simple example, we may actually be able to communicate our brand natively through our products or have the logos earlier on, or maybe you could have a video logo, et cetera, to get over the 20% textuals, et cetera. Um, so yes, the end card is an option, but again, it's not set in stone just because it's there. We see people leaving it there for their brand identity to come across at the end of the carousel, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. The number of images and this is a question from Apana. So the number of images in a carousel format is five right now, but we see few ads with more than five creatives. Is there any specific requirement for the same? So the number of cards that can be shown at this time is five. You can have less, such as three, um, but you can upload 10 images onto Facebook and auto optimize for the five best cards. So as I said, again, usually in my newsfeed, I'm seeing carousels between three and five. 
there's no best number. Um, we would love you to play more and experiment with these to tell the best, most engaging stories that you possibly can on the platform. Okay, we have another question here from Rob. Can I use different call to actions in the same ad? So at this time, you must use the same call to action in each card in the carousel. This obviously is referring to the piece under, uh, underneath, which will say install now or learn more, etc. Uh, that's what we mean when we're talking about the call to action. Instagram requires a call to action too, but on Facebook and the audience network, the call to action is optional. So this is interesting again, especially when we think about the copy tips, uh, tips six and seven that we spoke about earlier. Yes, you can have a, you know, you, you must have the same call to action in each card of the carousel, but the message you put across in the copy underneath the image can be a different call to action verbally. So if the call to action underneath each element of the unit in the carousel was learn more or install now, the copy that accompanied it could be like, you know, install for best deals on shoes or so you can find the best dresses if this is, of course, if you're an e-commerce client. So we can play around with it a little bit more. And that's that's the key thing I take out from, from this whole um, session, really, is to just play with it. We have more space. There's more creative real estate in which we can tell deep, meaningful stories and connect with people in ways that we couldn't before. So that's why we're so excited about it here at Facebook, because the space to do that is now greater. You're not constrained by just one image or video and one box. You can put four, five, three, you can put combinations of video. You could start with one image one and two being a panorama, uh, image three being a video, and then you could have your logo and then you could finish with another video, like the combinations and permutations of creative stories that we can tell are huge. Um, and we're really only just seeing the start of people playing with the format. I think the best vertical to look at in terms of the, uh, really the pinnacle of, carousel ads we have at the moment is e-commerce advertisers like kate spade are doing fantastic things with the carousel format um tommy hilfiger also doing some great things um their ads are consistent they're playing with it they're visual the videos are nice and short the copy is short um so really really impressed with that sort of work that they're doing right now uh where can i buy carousel ads and this question is from mary um, so carousel ads are available via ads manager, power editor, the API and Facebook marketing partners. Have one more. Is it possible to see which image in the carousel has been clicked most? And this is from Ior. So in addition to existing ad reporting, there is special reporting for carousel. We will display the number of clicks of each separate carousel link in the link ad and report conversations tied to each card. Actually, so that's actually reporting conversations tied to each card view slash click. So um, yes. Just looking for a few more questions here. Um, so this question here is from Vincent. Is it recommended to have the same landing page for each image or will it result in user frustration? Thanks. This is a really, really interesting question, actually, because it refers to the consistency of your user experience, aka when I click on the ad, what page am I being taken to? Um, and I would advise if all of the pieces in the carousel unit or creatives are from the same campaign, then yes, it probably makes sense to go to the same landing page, but you might want to put them on the say product or piece of creative that they actually engage with, you might want to optimize that landing page to reduce friction and to reduce any frustration of being led to a different place. I think it's really interesting when we're looking at Facebook ads because what an ad does, firstly, is it gives a perception of your brand, but it also sets user expectations about what they're going to achieve when they engage with you. So if you promise A, but you give them B, then this is going to lead in some frustration. If you give them, promise them A and you give them A, then this is fantastic. You're delivering a clear, consistent experience that's going to work. So I would look to optimize my landing page if I can. If you cannot and you can only send them to one page, then I would look at how you can frame your creative so that you're setting the expectations up right, i.e. you're not promising them that they're going to somewhere that they're not. 
we have another question from Lai, which is, if I don't have a website, it means that I can't use the carousel. And that's the question. Can I not use the carousel if I don't have a website? So, um, no, uh, it doesn't mean that. It means with the call to action that sits under the carousel, again, this is optional. So you can still use a carousel. It depends on the objective. Um, but, you know, a Facebook page is needed. So if you were doing a brand awareness objective, you wouldn't need to actually link anyone off to it. You could still run a carousel. You do need a Facebook page to be able to do that, but you don't have to have an external website to link them off to. So again, it depends on the objective. Okay, we have a question here from Hassam, which says, can you please explain what do you mean by optimizing the carousel image? How do we do that? What are the advantages and disadvantages? So, as we said before, in the carousel, you can showcase up to five images, um, but you have the ability to upload 10 images. And what the optimization does is it finds the best five images that are getting the best performance. So it will look at all 10 and it will say, hey, A, B, D, F, and G are performing the best. So let's use these in the carousel, AKA it optimizes to the best performing creatives across the 10, and then we'll serve these in your ads. So if you had a carousel with five creatives in, it would serve those fives in the most effective order that are gonna drive your business objectives. Now, as we said, this is fantastic. The advantage of it is obviously that it drives better results. The disadvantage of it is that if you're trying to tell a sequential story, which we spoke about in the first tip, or your image is a panorama that extends across all five of the carousel images, then when you use this optimization, it's going to reorder those images and it's going to mean your story gets muddled up. So if your core objective, for instance, is brand awareness and you really wanna tell a specific story in a specific order across the carousel, then we would not recommend using creative optimization. If it's not necessarily what you're trying to drive and you just have images that can exist alone in any order, then absolutely use creative optimization and we'll pick the best five from your 10. We have another question here from George. Is the character limit strictly 40? Um, so yes, headlines are 40 characters and the body text is 90. Um, but this is good, right? Because you have these character constraints which you need to play with creatively. As we said before, if you have really, really long copy on any Facebook ad, you're asking people to do too much. So by keeping the copy short, it's very interesting as a creative challenge, how do you best communicate your message to your audience in the least possible words that make it the most easily digestible by them? Just looking for some more questions here. If you have the same link, and this question is from Francisco, if you have the same link for all images, you can't know which image has been clicked the most. Um, that's the question, so just to, to repeat that, if you have the same link, how will you know which image has been clicked the most? Um, you will. You can see which cards the clicks are coming from in the reporting. I'm just looking now to see if there's any more. Okay, so this question is from Andre um, Babi. Um, and it says, hi, do you, have some, do you have some examples of vertical images used in carousel? As if you look at the rotated image, for example, a rotated image of a dress cut in a carousel picture. Um, so right now the carousel format is just square. It's just one-to-one. -one. Um, I am not sure about the product roadmap for vertical imagery, but again, we still think that you can tell a great story within the square format. Um, we just have to be smart in terms of how we crop those images, where we put the focal point, how we light the products or people or experience, et cetera. Um, square format is actually very interesting as we are seeing more and more content being developed in the one-to-one -one ratio. Um, we've been working with quite a lot of film directors lately and you know, it's a, it's a learning curve for the industry in terms of actually editing down for this format because it's not something we've really done until the emergence of mobile. So we're seeing it more and more, and that's why we are developing 
a square format for the carousel. How is the 20% text rule enforced within videos on carousel ads? Is it only taking the thumbnail into consideration or is it more complex than that? Um, so, one second. On carousel, it's only taking some else. So, in video ads, you can have text as the the ad auto plays. Um, we would advise not having twenty percent text on the thumbnail, um, but you are still welcome to have text in the video itself. And we've also seen some fantastic results with people using copy in videos. One of the trends we're seeing on Facebook at the moment is that we are seeing more and more people watch videos without sound, and so it's important. Is my video going to convey my message to my audience if they haven't clicked on the video to, in, to, to enable that sound? And text and copy and subtitles are just one way of doing this. You can, of course, tell a story visually without any text on the screen. But in the same way, I mean, I don't know if you've ever been on the train lately and there's other people around, so you know, I really want to click in for sound on this video, but I can't because there's people around and it'll be embarrassing. So you end up watching the video and just reading the subtitles. We're seeing that more and more. Um, so you can include text on your videos. And actually, if you're trying to tell a story that can exist without sound, it can be quite a good thing to do. So we're gonna take one more question before we close out. Thanks to everyone who's stuck it out this long. Um, would you recommend the carousel format for FMCGs? So fast moving consumer goods companies. And that's from Alma. Short answer, yes. Um, we think the unit is fantastic for any advertiser across any area of business, across any objective. The challenge is just to tell the most engaging story to the audience that we're trying to reach. So first step, look at your audience, look at the FMCG audience. What is it that they're likely to engage with? Where can I start to think about the creative that I'm going to build? Um, and then really using the carousel to bring that to life. Again, if it's FMCG, you could show household things in quite a um, rational manner across the carousel format, that's the, the, the first place you go. It might be quite obvious, but then think about the stories that you could tell um, with some of the tips that we spoke about earlier. Can we change emotion across it? Could we show someone's day using fast moving consumer goods? Um, maybe the start of the carousel is some dirty clothes and by the end of the carousel, they've become clean with personal or something like that. So the, the stories are endless and we believe they can be told for anything. Um, so with that, I'm gonna hand it back over to Lee, um, but thank you very much for all of your time and we hope to hear from you soon. Thanks, Lewis, and thank you everyone for joining the webinar. We hope that you really enjoyed this session and that it inspires you to go make your own carousel ads today. We'll be sending out a PDF outlining the tips that we covered and a recording of today's session will be available to be rewatched as well. Let us know what you thought of the webinar by completing our survey. Your input is very valuable to us and we'll make our future webinars better. Thanks again and see you next time.